Hey, good morning, everyone. Happy Friday morning to you, and welcome back to Morning Musings. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. This is video number two in our review and response and refutation of a new book, 2019, by Lance Conley. Uh, the book is entitled Hope Resurrected. If you want to waste some good money, you can get that off of Amazon, not trying to be overly harsh or critical. You know, I've, I produced the first video uh, exposing the, the absolutely rotten foundation of Mr. Conley's entire approach in this book. That approach, that foundation of Mr. Conley can be, can be best summarized by one of his statements early in the book, page 25, when he says, Many people like to believe our ideas of truth and doctrine are born from, a, from an objective reading of Scripture. And while this idea sounds pleasant, it is not accurate. The things we value theologically, spiritually, and emotionally come to us from one tradition or another. Tradition offers us the practice of passing things down like the church did and still does today. So, according to Mr. Connolly, reading the scriptures, just the scriptures, does not give us the objective truth. We receive the truth of what the scriptures said by the church that has passed down traditions. Nothing could more clearly illustrate the fallacy of this book, the underlying rotten foundation. Because you see, Mr. Conley believes in something that is known as apostolic succession. He believes that the apostles appointed elders, presbyters, pastors, and that those individuals then had the divine truth. They in turn appointed successors who had the divine truth. Now listen, I want you to catch the power of this. If the doctrine of apostolic succession is true, there should not be any divisions or differences in doctrine. The Holy Spirit and God is not the author of confusion. So if Paul, who taught the same thing as Peter, and the rest of the apostles, Galatians chapter 2. If they divinely appointed, laid hands on their successors, gave them that united single truth, then they, those divinely inspired, divinely appointed successors should have taught the exact same non-varying, non-contradicting truth. There should have been one single truth. But what do we find in church history? Well, just as one little item here. Oh, by the way, I've got to take note of this very, very quickly. I pointed out that, you know, the, some of those very earliest writers, Justin the Martyr, praise the idea present in the church that even married couples do not have sex except to have children. Mr. Conley tried to divert attention from that and say, well, no, no, that, that's not accurate. The subject matter was the uh, abandonment of children that was present in the Roman Empire. has nothing to do with that. Does Irenaeus talk about that and condemn that? Yes, he did. But in that discussion that I quoted, he's not talking about that. He is talking about and praising Christian married couples who did not have conjugal relations except to bear children. Now, here's the interesting thing. I have asked Mr. Conley no less than three or four times. Since that's church history, and oh, by the way, all you got to do is go on Google and type in patristic attitudes towards sex, and you'll find that from the third century onward, probably earlier than that, 
from the third century onward, the church taught no sex, even in marriage, except to bear children. So I have asked Mr. Conley if he accepts and teaches that, quote, united testimony. I'm still waiting for the answer. All that Mr. Conley has done is he made a video and over and over and over, number one, he used expletives. Number two, he called me a liar. None of that, which of course is ungodly, none of that proves one thing. Okay, all of that said, I, wa I want us to examine in this video, I don't know how many videos I'm going to dedicate to this because really uh, this particular issue, although it's, I mean, even though it's really, really critical, uh, Mr. Conley wants us to believe, oh, it's not even important. Well, if it's not important, why did you devote a chapter to it? Now, he wants to discuss the dating of the book of Revelation. And he says on page 32, I am not an early date partial preterist. I have been part of that camp of thought before and must say, please catch the power of this, that there are some very decent arguments for the Revelation being written in the 60s AD as far as using Scripture and internal data in the Bible goes, unquote. So according to Mr. Conley, there are some very decent arguments to establish the early dating of Revelation based upon the internal evidence. But in this entire chapter of how many pages here? From 32 to 61, does Mr. Conley share with us the internal evidence? He only refers, you know, he simply types out, well, Revelation 2, uh, Revelation 3, no exegesis, no examination of what the text says. Instead, he would say things like, well, you know, the throne of Satan in Pergamum, that fits real well with Domitian. No exegetical demonstration, just a claim. Now, you see what he's saying here is that, yes, we have some really decent arguments for the early date from the internal evidence, but I'm going to ignore the in in internal evidence, and I'm going to try to convince you of the late date based upon what? Well, he gives us a lot of pictures of coins minted by Domitian. He... Um, He quotes several scholars. He chides and condemns Kenneth Gentry's examination of Irenaeus and the unreliability of, of Irenaeus, saying, well, Kenneth Gentry is simply trying to poison the well against Irenaeus. I'll have more to say about that in the next video. But do you see what's happening here? On the one hand, yes, there's some very decent arguments for the early dating. On the other hand, I'm not going to talk about the internal evidence. I'm going to talk about external evidence, and you're supposed to believe that over what the Bible says. That's why I read to you the very first statement. Okay? Many people like to believe our, our, our ideas of truth and doctrine are born from, a, from an objective reading of Scripture. And while that idea sounds pleasant, it's not accurate. So, reading the internal evidence for the early dating of Revelation, no, no, no. You don't accept that. That's not good enough. You have to accept the evidence and the testimony of uninspired men. By the way, you know, in seeking um, to prove the, uh, the late date, he cites some scholars who make comments like this. 
page 50. Christians, notice this, may have been among those banished or executed from time to time during the 90s. Now, this is one of his scholars that he quotes to prove his late date, okay? But notice how weak, how feeble this testimony is. So once again, Christians may have been among those banished or executed from time to time during the 90s, but, this is his scholar, but the testimony falls short of confirming any organized program of persecution under Domitian's reign. Huh. May have, but no evidence. On page 59, the concentration of Jews and Christians in an environment where loyalty to the emperor found enthusiastic expression in the imperial cult made prosecution, quote, possible. Huh, possible. On page 60, thus cultic participation became a symbol that a person supported the interests of the providence, provinces economically and otherwise. Therefore, Catch it. While the government did not pursue Christians solely based upon their Christianity, policy decisions left them vulnerable to persecution nonetheless. Does he document that they were persecuted? No. He says it's possible. Not proven. What happened in the province of Asia during the reign of Domitian occurred because the circumstances created an environment that allowed the enemies of Christianity to once again attempt to destroy it. And what Mr. Conley fails to tell you, as I document in my book, Who is This Babylon, page 108 and following, and by the way, the, the citations that I give here are basically from late date advocates, men who accept the dating of the book for under Domitian and to speak of Roman persecution, but they admit the following. Donald Guthrie, a late date advocate, says the evidence for a widespread Domitianic persecution is, quote, not as conclusive as many suppose, unquote. Helmut Kester says Domitian, quote, never ordered a worldwide persecution of the Christians, unquote. Historian Richard Nywonger says, quote, It cannot be proven without doubt, <coughs> pardon me, that Domitian initiated a, persecu a persecution against Christians. Listen very carefully. Here's a historian. Roman records provide no clear evidence of even a small-scale movement, let alone a concerted or large-scale persecution, unquote. F.F. Bruce noted Domitian's... Do reputation as a persecutor of Christians, but he said, quote, evidence to justify this reputation is scanty, unquote. And I've got other quotes in here from late date advocates. So here we have Mr. Conley quoting some sources who say, well, it's possible. It might have been, but there's no proof of it. And yet he wants to use that as proof. But he rejects the internal evidence, you see, even though there are some very good arguments for it from the internal evidence. But the internal evidence, you see, that's not where we get our objective truth. We get it from the church tradition. And the church tradition says Domitian, therefore we'll accept church tradition over what the Bible actually says. This is Mr. Conley's presuppositional approach to the book of Revelation. Ah, oh, internal evidence is okay. It's not proof. We have to go to tradition because, after all, we believe in apostolic tradition. We believe in church tradition. And it might feel good to say that objective truth is gained from Scripture and Scripture alone. It's not true. It's not true at all. We only get it from tradition. And so what I, this is what exactly what I mean. By the way, Go to my website, donkpreston.com, bibleprophecy.com. Order a copy of my book, Who Is This Babylon?, in which I document source after source after source of late-date advocates 
okay, all of whom acknowledge and demonstrate, and by the way, I've got a ton more of them since I wrote this book, whole lot more of scholars who are increasingly saying Domitian never persecuted the church. So go to my website, donkpreston.com, bibleprophecy.com, order this book, make mention that you saw the offer on YouTube or Facebook, and I'll refund your shipping, okay? Well, that's enough for today, but let me close with this, uh, with this closing statement on page 61 from Mr. Conley that is surely, absolutely, one of the most theologically naive, one of the most theologically false statements that a person could ever, ever make. He says, 61, as one can see, there's more than enough evidence for the late date of Revelation and more than enough evidence that, that the early dating method has some flaws in it. I wish to note, though, to the readers and emphasize this, there's nothing wrong with believers believing the early date position, theologically speaking. Catch the power of this statement. It makes no difference whether Revelation was written early or late, as full preterism will still be wrong regardless. That is unbelievably bad, okay? And here's why. Church history, okay, church history has taught that the book of Revelation is about the final coming of the Lord. It's certainly about the coming of the Lord in the judgment of Babylon. So if it's true that the book of Revelation is about the coming of the Lord in the judgment of Babylon, and if it is true that that's the second coming of Christ, i.e. in the judgment of Babylon, then if it's proven that the book of Revelation was written before the fall of Jerusalem and predicted that event, then that proves, guess what? The second coming was at the fall of Jerusalem in AD 70. And Mr. Conley's statement, oh, well, you can agree to the early date, but that still doesn't prove preterism. Do you see how fallacious that is? That is preeminently illogical. If Revelation is about the coming of Christ, the judgment, and the resurrection, and it posits that at A.D. 70, then all other eschatological texts, 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 Corinthians 15, 2 Corinthians 5, Acts 1, must likewise refer to A.D. 70. And Mr. Conley is therefore absolutely wrong. Thanks so much for joining me for this morning's Morning Musings. Now, next Friday, I will continue. And I'll show you some of Mr. Conley's absolutely unbelievably bad comments and his fallacious attempt to prove the late date of the book of Revelation. It's really, really some bad stuff. Okay? Thanks for joining me. Have a safe weekend. Hope to see you on Monday.